Thank you, Glenn, and good afternoon to you all. This seems like a very good segue to discuss what I am going to dedicate my time to, that is the U.S. moratorium on heritable genetic modification. By way of a historic backdrop, the enactment of moratoria in general can be safely ascribed to a recurrent fear of humanity when faced with any disruptive technology. This recoiling at change is especially prominent in the reproductive arena, wherein millennia-old societal norms of the tradition of family remain still highly resistant to change. Examples of disruption-induced fear date back, for all we know, to the invention of fire and some of the subsequent discoveries. But more recently, and more to the point, uh, fear engendering technologies included IVF, human embryonic stem cells, as you've just heard, cloning, and of course, human germline modification. This fear of technological progress invariably gives rise to moralization and rationalization intent on maintaining the status quo at all costs. Examples of moralization often take the form of charged doubt engendering phrases such as playing God, slippery slope, crossing a line, tampering with creation, revising the laws of nature, or altering the natural order. More recent, indeed more specific phraseology makes reference to three parent babies in alluding to mitochondrial replacement therapy, or to designer babies in alluding to editing the genome of the human embryo. Rationalization of objections to a given disruptive technology for its part tends to emphasize risks rather than potential benefits. Examples include, though, are not limited to individual risk, which is the FDA saying it's all about safety and efficacy, societal risk, which, though ill-defined, invariably implies inadvertent evolutionary harm to our species. Eugenic risk, which could of course arise should humanity elect to abuse the technology in question. Justice risk, that is access inequity between the haves and have-nots. And finally, progeny risk, an objection that is frequently supplemented by ethical concerns over so-called non-consenting would-be offspring. Enter the moratorium on heritable genetic modification, aka the FDA rider, all five lines of which were inserted into the Consolidated Appropriation Act of 2016, as you have heard, which was signed into law on December the 18th, 2015, that is, two years ago, and a mere two weeks after the conclusion of the International Summit just mentioned by Dr. Daly. Since that time, as was mentioned, the FDA rider has been assiduously renewed. On two occasions, Prominent members of the House of Representatives characterized the moratorium as a pro-life measure and indeed as a, quote, victory for those who are concerned about life, end quote. More specific objections to germline modification, however, have never been publicly articulated by, legis by the legislative branch. Therefore, one can only conjecture as to what these objections might be. Though convictions 
as to the moral and legal status of the human embryo and the sanctity of life are likely to be at play. Embryo destruction or even manipulation can be assumed to feature prominently in this context. Finally, it is obvious that the FDA rider is hardly without consequences. First, the moratorium precludes the prevention of inborn afflictions at this time, especially mitochondrial DNA diseases, the science of which is clearly ready for an investigation on new drug application and phased clinical trials. Second, the moratorium places US science and medicine at a competitive disadvantage. We need look no further than the UK to make this determination. Now in the throes of clinical trials of mitochondrial replacement therapy, the UK may well be home to the hoped for birth of a disease-free infant. This dichotomous transatlantic reality flies in the face of the high quality science which has been conducted in the US in this arena, replete, I might add, with the first and only non-human primate trial. Finally, the moratorium opens the door to cross-border care, i.e. medical tourism, an example of which we have already witnessed, as you know, in the case of mitochondrial replacement therapy, which was carried out in Guadalajara, Mexico. Confronted by the risk panic wrought by emerging technologies, framers of moratoria all too often march reflexively down the path of least resistance, leaving unresolved questions in their wake. Declaring an outright blanket moratorium is rarely an optimal prescription. Instead, consideration could be given to case-specific precautionary measures that are necessary and sufficient to satisfy legitimate safety and efficacy concerns and at the same time allowing for the continued progression of science. The degree to which self-regulation is to be relied upon must also be ascertained and considered. As already noted, a compelling progression of well-reasoned regulation has taken shape in the UK over the last 15 years, during which mitochondrial replacement has been unlinked from the editing of the genome of the human embryo. It seems only fair that American women at risk for heritable diseases and their prospective children deserve nothing less. Thank you very much.